That's something new. That wasn't there last week. That, uh, you see in that mountain there, that gray stripe, that's a landslide. That's happened sometime in the last week. That's kind of cool. But yep, all done, heading back to base now, so... Figured, why not? Oh, let's see. Wow, actually a decent amount of traffic today. It's warmed up to a whole 65 in the mountains. Uh, with the heat index, it's closer to 82 or so, though. So, yeah. Needless to say, I got the air conditioning on. Stop it. Now, that's one of the things with the, uh, the higher latitudes, is the angle of the sunlight is different enough that it actually... The effective temperature is much higher than the air temperature when it comes to things like heat stroke and whatnot. So... And simply because, you know, the, the sun's hitting at a lower angle, more of your body's exposed to direct sunlight, you overheat quicker. Bada boom, bada bing, you're, you know, sitting in the shade, sipping on some lemonade while everybody's worried about you. Oh, hey, look, zip lines. I should do that sometime. I really should. And they have fresh pizza there. Like, 60 miles outside of town. Fresh pizza. Can't beat that. Uh, but, God, it's beautiful up here. Uh, let's see. It's gonna be a bit of red letter day for my channel, I think. Holy crap, this could be like four videos, five videos maybe going up in one day. Damn. Just looking at the mountains here. Yeah, middle of summer. I mean, hell, it's July 18th. There's still snow on the peaks. We've actually had a relatively cooler summer than usual in that case. Usually there's no snow come this time of year. They're not that tall, really, when you get down to it. I mean, they're mile, mile and a half tall. Really, it's not, it's not major. But, you know, tall enough to call it mountains. That in this place right now is about one freaking match away from turning into a bonfire. Everything's been so dry and whatnot lately, and the, uh, the native spruce trees reproduce by fire, so they're full of this wonderful oil that, uh, basically makes them almost impossible to put out. And, uh, they literally spreads like wildfire. There's a reason they, uh, that saying's thing. But, I mean, still, beautiful. Wouldn't trade for, you know, well, actually, I might trade for somewhere else in the world. But, you know, that's, that's sometime in the future. Oh, we're coming back to the scar where we blew up the mountain. Yeah, no, it's a it's supposed to be a, a lot darker, more lush green right now, so everything's actually pretty parched. Uh, a lot of the the ponds and stuff inside the road are starting to dry up, all that fun stuff. Not been a good year for rain around here, that's for certain. But hey, at least we're not in California or Colorado, where they're actively on fire. Oh, back to Hicks Creek. So uh, let's see, so we're traffic keep right. Eh, well, I'm the only traffic going this way, so everybody else is heading out of town. I'm heading back towards town. Oh look, slide area. Yeah. Actually you can kind of see that right there. That's that's a little rock slide, but shit happens. I'm trying to remember, I used to go fossil hunting out here. That was I was in junior high, that was a while ago. I don't remember exactly where it was. There's a little turnoff here, and it takes you to this wonderful, uh, basically outcropping. A, it's coal bearing shale, is what it is, but right above it is a, a whole bunch of sea life fossils. I mean, a whole bunch of clams and whatnot. It's just really awesome. Basically, clams, actually, you get down to it. Or bivalves, whatever you want to call them. I don't know, something, you know, a couple hundred million years old can be called a clam still. Yeah, nothing big, but, uh, Dude. Okay, you see the sign where it says camera outlook 1500 feet? Yeah, there's a goddamn parking area right here. Don't park on the side of the road, you dumbass. Fucking tourists. <sighs> What's the old saying from up here? If it's tourist season, why can't we shoot them? Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Oh, look, Victory Road. 
there's a, a Bible camp up there that is, oh my God, fancy as hell. I mean, it, it's technically a camp because I call it that. It's more like a freaking four-star resort. And it's just like, I mean, cool, you know, they let use different churches and stuff use it, but at the same time, the, the church that runs it is very, uh, very, like, fundamentalist or whatnot. You know, they're the ones that all the other churches look at and go, fuck, you know, it's... Even the Catholics are like, man, that's too strict for me. And that's when you know it's bad. But, uh, I can't think of it. I'm just rambling at this point, so enjoy. Oh, mile 94. I've got 50 miles to go back to base. And, uh, home base is like at mile 43 point something. So, can't remember exactly what, but yeah, close enough. We just had a mileage sign. Oh, no, we, other way. But yeah, we've got 46 miles. Sorry. Yep, going back to Palmer. But yeah, huge, beautiful road, two lanes each way. There's freaking nobody on it. This is living the life right here. Of course, same time, don't try driving this road on the weekends. I mean, it's a freaking Wednesday afternoon, for God's sakes. And, uh, it makes a huge difference. A huge difference. I mean, right now I'm looking at just under an hour to get back to base. Well, if I drive this on the weekend, it'd be closer to three. Motorhomes everywhere. There's so many hills that motorhomes, well, they're, people usually overload their motorhome and travel trailers, what I've noticed. So that the engine, you know, either the motorhome engine or the truck hauling travel trailer, it just can't handle it. It's just too much weight. And, uh, you know, not really a good thing. You know, you get down to it. But, yeah, and you'll hit a hill like the one I just hit here. I never drop below 65, and uh, they'll be doing like 20. And just like struggling to make it up the hill. It's just like, don't, you can get a bigger truck. Or just leave some shit at home. You know, it's... Personally, I have an opinion. Two people, get like a 10 foot, 12 foot travel trailer. That's all you need. You don't need all the amenities at home. If you want that, fucking stay home. Or get a hotel. The whole point of camping is to rough it. Oh, hey, back to one lane each way now. Sweet. Oh, the willows are looking weird. Those got moosed back when they were younger, I'm betting. Uh, basically, moose will come by and they'll. They'll nip off the tender branches in the middle of winter when that's all there is to eat. That and they'll debark trees. As long as they don't debark all the way around the tree, it can usually recover. But uh, if you debark all the way around the tree, even just a thin line, it's dead. Done. Because it can't transport nutrients up or down the, the trunk anymore. But the mooses are pretty good usually about only debarking one side of it. It's like they know... Which they're... I'm not sure if they're smart enough to realize that, but... uh. Moose are actually pretty damn smart. They had to start using combination locks in the zoo up here because a simple slide bolt, moose figured it out pretty quick. And I wouldn't be surprised one of these days, one of those moose is going to be fiddling around with a combo lock and pop it loose, so. But at the same time, they're incredibly stupid because they're like, I'm the biggest thing around. Everything else can get out of my way. And then it's like, oh, hello, truck. And it's like, oh, look, moose burger. That's actually exactly what we do. Because there's, even if you hit one with a truck, I guess, a tractor trailer, semi, there's still enough usable meat on it that you could feed a family for like a winter. I mean, it's, they're, they're big animals. But, uh, so whenever one gets hit, the, uh, the troopers call this charity and they have a list of people. And when they get on your name, they call you, you go out and you, uh, you have to transport the carcass away, but you're in charge of butchering and everything yourself. Which is pretty grisly work, but at the same time, you're walking away with between six to 800 pounds of meat. I mean, it's just like, damn. It's a lot of food on a moose. Cross teeves. Alright, we... Uh, Ober Byron. Bayern. 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 B-A-Y-E-R-N. Bayern. I should probably stay in my lane. Let's see what else we got going on here. I know a whole lot of nothing right here, just trees. Trees and head down the side of the mountain. 
The ditches are full of clover. I guess it means it's been a little while since they've been dug out again. Oh, you're getting close to time to dig out the, uh, the western ditch here, the one on the right, because we're heading south right now. But, uh, for the most part, the eastern ditch is just a cliff. So, we're gonna go off the road. A good portion of this highway is a choice between going off a cliff or climbing into the side of a mountain. Not a whole lot of places to go, so drive safe, people. Drive safe. Watch out for motorcycles. Perrington Creek. It's about three foot wide. <laughs> it's relatively deep, though. But, uh, yeah. It's real narrow. It's run through a... Basically... Oh, Jesus Christ! Alright. Um, a crack in the side of the mountain. So it can only go so wide, but it's managed to dig itself a deeper channel somehow. Alright. You got a whole bunch of rock inside the mountain. You got a cliff right ahead of us here. I mean, like, hello! That's, that's glacier activity for you right there. Glacier came by and just carved off a big chunk of the mountain. Which actually, the, where I live is technically a floodplain, but it's about 80 feet of gravel in spots. Just straight down, like three or four feet of topsoil and then just gravel. And actually, there's some places, uh, a little closer to the mountains, uh, I had four inches of topsoil and then it was rock. I mean, just gravel all the way down but that's all leavings from the glacier when it retreated is it just left I just crumbled everything in its path and just left it behind well the cottonwood is starting to, to bloom up here great if you ain't see any white dots flip past the camera that's what it is it's cottonwood overgrown dandelions about 60 foot tall but uh, yeah they huge leafy trees and Summertime, they, they grow these pods that open up and it just cotton balls everywhere. And the shit's horrible. If you have like a heating system or whatever, you gotta clean your filter out. Uh, you gotta change your filter in your car. Because it just packs it full of cotton. Yeah, it's, it's a yearly annoyance is what that one is. You can blow all the stuff out. I mean, you take your filter out, hit it with some compressed air, and it takes all the, the cotton off and you put it back in the car. It's not a huge deal. Ash, on the other hand, when volcanoes erupt, that's a bit of a deal. Hey, look, Long Lake. <clears throat> Get in your lane, asshole. That's how you cross that yellow line. Alright. Yeah, I talk to traffic. Especially when I'm by myself. Let's see. Yep, here's Long Lake coming up here on the left. There we go. And it's one of those, don't you go off the road here because it's a long drop into water. And if it's in the wintertime, it's a long drop into ice. It's not a favorable outcome for anybody. Especially that one, it's actually one of those really deep glacier lakes. Yeah. I'm not sure off the top of my head how deep it is, but I know it's over 50 feet in spots. There's a lake around here that's got one spot in the lake. Where it's like the glacier got stuck or something, but it was, uh, it's like 600 feet deep. <laughs> It's not that big of a lake, for God's sakes. But, I mean, the surface is it's like 200 acres of surface, roughly. But there's, yeah, 600 foot hole right in the middle of it. And that's where you get the big fish. The one's been working down there for 100 years. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it looks like there's a relatively fresh slide up there, too. I got it cleaned up though. Uh, we're coming up on the construction up ahead here. That's why traffic's kind of bunched together. Because when you get down to it, there's really nowhere for them to turn off. So once the, uh, the pilot car lets them through, they tend to stay clumped up. Oh, travel trailer, hello. Get on your sight! Long Lake's kind of busy. Do 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 do. Hey, 30 miles an hour. The sign says 30, I'm taking it at 50. You know, that's the speed limit here. 
Yellow signs are simply suggestions. Okay, this guy's following the suggestions. Uh, and if anybody's ever wondering, the yellow signs, they, uh, the suggested speed for going around corners and whatnot is about 15 miles an hour slower than the max absolute safe speed. So if it says 30 and you're confident enough in your driving abilities and you're pretty decent at it, you can probably hit it at like 45 miles an hour. Which is actually, I'm hitting this one at 40 and it's at 30 miles an hour, so not a huge deal. Okay, why? Don't touch the brakes, just go. Just, just go. Go away, shoot. Also, looking at the camera, he's a lot closer than he looks like. He's only about 20 feet ahead of me. Maybe I shouldn't be riding his ass. Same time, they're just now leaving a slide area, and I'd rather not get caught by a rock slide. Yeah, we got another parking area coming up. All right. Yeah, they got these parking areas, and they're like, oh, you can pull over here, you can take pictures and shit, and then there's all these damn trees in the way. <laughs> I mean, it's, you're not taking pictures of shit. Mile 84. Hey, we're making a pretty good time, really. Told my boss I'd be back in an hour and a half, about 25 minutes ago, so we're right on schedule for that. At this point, I'm kind of serious to, or curious to see how much more uh, memory my phone has for uh, video. Oh my god, dude. Go! Oh. 